قولي شو بتشوفي في الجنة قولي لي شو في لكن قولي شو بتشوفي في الجنة قولي لي شو في And then from as soon as you walk in you can feel the oppression you travel on their roads and for kilometers on end concrete high walls for kilometers and kilometers and kilometers separating and then when you reach their suburbs the concrete walls they start to have paint and artwork so that it doesn't look as intimidating and then you get there and then you want to enter the quds the holy mosque and it's surrounded by israeli soldiers so you come to walk in you got to show your passport proof of id and there's a man there an israeli holding a fully automatic weapon and i need to justify myself to him to why i need to enter the masjid of allah <coughs> anyway so you walk in you show your id you go in there and you walk into the quds and wallahi it's like the walls are crying there's no youth because they don't allow him. no youth you walk in and they have a stand a glass stand with a collection of bombs grenades shells things that have been fired into the masjid over the period of years you look at the shells made in the USA Anyway, so you pray your Isha and maybe now you're thinking maybe I'll stay and make some dua, make No, you can't stay, brother. Why? Because they got to lock up the masjid. 9:30, everyone's got to get out. But who does the final inspection? They do. Do you think they honor the masjid and take their shoes off? They walk in. And while all this is that you you can absolutely say nothing. And then you speak to the local and you tell him how come you know like how come they like where's all the muslims how come there isn't more people he tells you brother i have to show my passport and my id five times before i reach the doors of the masjid this is a citizen he has to show his id and his passport five times before he can reach the masjid and if he forgets it so let's just say he's forgotten right he can get charged he can he can he can he falls he falls he falls into harm you imagine in this country you cannot possibly like you cannot travel from lekemba to say say lekemba to dawuch you say from lekemba to dawuch you you get stopped twice this is for the citizen never mind the tourist the citizen his own country he gets stopped twice and twice he has to stop prove who he is get out of the car if his wife is with him she also has to get out of the car the car's got to get inspected every single day and if this brother has to go to dawuch you twice three times four times it's the same guard he's seen him he's seen him the first time he's seen him a couple of hours ago him his wife his kids have to get out of the car and they have to inspect But it gets worse. It gets worse. So we're traveling along the highway and you see this beautiful land of Palestine. And in the midst you see this odd object, this object that has nothing to do with the surroundings. And it's a um, it's a container. Just a container that's sitting in the middle of bush. You think how did that possibly get there? You know what it is, brothers? It's Palestinian land. that some jewish person puts his container on there but it doesn't do anything and it sits for a month two three a year two years until it becomes normal to you until the palestinians no longer question the container and then what does he do he builds a house there it's become his land that blunt yani it's not uh, it's blunt bluntly And you see these little containers everywhere. And you see these little containers everywhere. My time is almost up, you know, I'll 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 share just a few things with you. 
When we went to Masjid Al Khalil, that's where our Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam is buried. This isn't, yani, I'm not trying to put spices here. To sp this is history, you can look it up. Masjid Al Khalil was a masjid that belongs to the Muslims. In 1994, Salat Al Fajr, the Muslims were there praying Salat Al Fajr. A Jew from the States, a doctor, walks in and opens fire to the Muslims that were praying. While in sujood, kills 30 and wounds 125. So what do you think happened? I'll tell you what happened. They closed off the mosque. They made an investigation. You know what the result of the investigation was? They turned half of it into a synagogue. And this whatever you want to call him. His grave became a shrine. And extremist Jews used to go there and make pilgrimage at his grave. A hero. You know, my brothers, wallahi, when you visit Palestine, it's not like hearing about it and seeing it on TV. You see the oppression in the eyes of the Muslims. Wallahi, you see it. And you can see in their eyes that they've given hope in the Muslims. Wallahi, there are so many, so many experiences that I wish that I wish I could share with you, but my time is short. But finally, the reality is, is that they want you to forget about Palestine. And that's the truth. They don't want you, they don't want your money, they don't want your tourism, they want nothing. You and this place needs to finish. And so long as this place is not in the eyes of the Muslims, it's not in the hearts of the Muslims, then for them this is good. Have you ever asked yourself, why is it we know so little about Palestine? I'll end with this. This, this was a request of the Imam of Masjid Al-Quds. He said to me, please go back and tell the youth of Islam to come and visit this place. He said, come and visit. And Wallahi understand that what's happening in Palestine is very real. Very, very, very real. Jazakallah khair.